Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here. So just recently, I posted this video on my Instagram. I've been wasting all my tears On someone who never once thought of me I couldn't think but to dream the video features my good friends at a band called Auburn Gray performing live in my studio. Everything was recorded 100% live all at the same time. They played together as a band, again, live in the studio, and it was filmed and recorded into my DAW all at the same time. Now, if you've been recording for any length of time, you probably noticed that the singer is singing through an SM58, which is not an expensive microphone. As a matter of fact, when I record bands live in my studio, none of the microphones that I use are expensive. SM57s, SM58s, some SM81s for the overheads on the drums. Very, very affordable, simple tools, microphones, no external preamps, no analog, anything. Just a basic interface. As a matter of fact, I use the same or very similar tools even when I'm recording albums, EPs, and traditional productions. So whether I'm recording a band live or whether I'm recording and mixing a band in a more traditional sense, whether it's a single EP or album, I use almost the exact same approach. Now, after posting the video, someone commented on the video and really got my gears turning. Mr. Danny McCarthy Thompson commented saying, why can't any vocals that I record on an SM58 sound this good? And again, this really got my gears turning and got me thinking about how much people think results come from gear. The truth is you could record album quality vocals even during a live performance with a basic SM58, which is a $100 microphone. The secret is how you EQ and mix your vocals within the production. As a matter of fact, when it comes to achieving professional results, so much of it comes down to how well you understand basic EQ and compression. And if you're looking for guidance on this topic and you're looking to improve your productions, I've put together something I think you're really gonna like. It's called my Crisp and Clear Heavy Mix Formula. It's a simple, straightforward PDF guide that showcases my favorite starting points for both EQ and compression for all of the main instruments within a production. And it also contains clickable links to private tutorials as well as multi-track downloads that accompany each tutorial so you could practice your mixing along with me. Download the multi-tracks, look at my EQ and compression moves for each of the main instruments and achieve the exact same results within your own DAW. So because Danny's comment was so good and it got me thinking so much, I decided to put together a custom tutorial just for him. In the tutorial, I show my exact EQ and plug-in chain on this specific vocal in this specific mix. Now people email me all the time asking similar questions, so I've decided to make the tutorial public on YouTube. So in this tutorial, you will see in detail how I achieved that studio quality vocal that was recorded live in an untreated room with an SM58. Enjoy the tutorial. Hello, Danny. Bobby Torres here, man, uh, with a custom tutorial. It's funny, I read your comment on Instagram yesterday and I wanted to write out like a two paragraph explanation on how to achieve this vocal sound. But the point is what you said really struck home for me because you said something along the lines of, man, I wish I can get my SM58 to sound this good, right? Just you saying that ignites a serious passion in me because the truth is, man, you can achieve amazing sounding results from the most basic microphones and the SM58 is no exception. So what I've decided to do here is just create this short custom tutorial for you where I'm gonna actually break down my exact signal chain or, or I should say plug-in chain for the exact vocal that you hear in that video. Now, as you could tell, that video is completely live. The band was performing 100% live. It was not pre-recorded. I set them up in my studio, which again, is just a converted rehearsal space. It's not even a real studio. And I let the band rip. Now, like I mentioned in my comment, the kid is a great vocalist and that definitely helped uh, with the sound. But the truth is, man, the reason why it sounds so crisp comes down to my processing and just my basic EQ and my level. So let's take a quick listen to the audio sample so you could hear what I'm working with here. I've been wasting all my tears. You know, a nice vocal sound, pretty condenser-like. I named this track Bass Fox because he's the bassist and he was the, the vocalist. Again, this was completely live. I mixed it just like I would mix any other record, just with a few key exceptions, but the overall approach is the same as far as achieving clarity out of the SM58. Now, you have to remember that SM58 is not gonna sound like a condenser mic out of the box. It's gonna sound darker. It's gonna sound much like the vocal mic I'm using right now. I'm speaking to you with an SM7. Dynamic mics 
are going to have more of a buildup of low end generally because you can get closer to it without a pop filter. Uh, so you're going to have a higher amount of proximity with a greater proximity effect, so more low end and less top end. So let's hear this vocalist raw. Okay, now you see a lot of edits here, and it, the reason why is because they're cymbal bleed, because it's a live mix, just to show you. I'm gonna actually just undo some of these. You hear a lot of drums in his vocal mic, because again, he was singing not even three feet away from the, the drummer. And because of that, I can't compress these vocals as much, but that's why you see some, some edits here. I just wanted to explain that. Let's see what these vocals sounded like raw, right? I'm gonna mute or bypass all of my plugins. And I think you're gonna be surprised at how different they sound. I've been wasting all my tears. Okay, very, very boxy, right? The magic really comes down to the EQ. And I taught this in the Frightbox Mix Crypt. You're gonna see a lot of this in a lot of my mixes. And I am a big fan of using dynamic mics on vocals. I like condensers, don't get me wrong. If I were using a condenser, I'd probably need less EQ. You know, the main takeaway here is this, a lot of low end roll off, more than most people would think, rolling off all frequencies below 287 hertz or 290 hertz, getting rid of a lot of low, uh, lower mids and pulling out extra top end mainly on this track because of the cymbals from the drum bleed, okay? So I just wanna make that clear. And I want you to hear how drastically each of these cuts has an effect, how drastic of an effect it has on the actual sound. Again, I just wanna show you how you could achieve this vocal sound on your own. You don't need fancy plugins at all. I'm using mainly stock plugins. I've been wasting all my tears. I've been wasting. So right there, the low free, uh, the high pass filter gets rid of a lot of crap that I don't want, a lot of that low end. I've been wasting all my tears. I've been wasting. Okay, the low, lower mid removal really clears up the vocal sound, and then. I've been wasting all my tears. If this were a studio recording, I probably wouldn't be rolling off this top end, but again, I want to get rid of the cymbals. That's the magic. Now, I have a little bit of a console emulator here, but that's not really doing much. I've been wasting all my tears. Just a little bit of subtle saturation. I'm using a stock saturator um, in my DAW. It's just a distortion plugin to make it sound a little more analog. I've been wasting all my tears. Not contributing much to the sound at all. The two other heavy hitters are going to be the compressor. I've been wasting all my tears. So I'm achieving around three to four dB of gain reduction, not a whole lot. Again, I cannot squash these vocals too much because of all the drum bleed and all the bleed in the vocal mic because it's a live recording. So I'm not even going crazy with compression. So a few dB of compression and then a little bit of uh, brick wall limiting just to keep a nice tight cap on the vocals. I've been wasting all my tears. And obviously the vocals sound louder because I'm pulling the threshold down, and, but it's only really affecting the vocals a few dB, so two to three dB. So around six dB of gain reduction instead of my usual, you know, typical studio 15 dB to 20 dB on a vocal. You can't get away with that with a live recording uh, because of the bleed. And then finally I have a slap echo. And the slap echo I'm using is a stock delay plugin. Yeah, stock delay plugin in Pro Tools. All I'm doing is delaying one side by 180 milliseconds and the right side by 220 and then just EQing that, rolling off all the top I don't need. And then the resulting vocal sound that you hear, and mind you, this SM58 was plugged into my cheapo interface. I didn't go through high-end analog preamps or no external outboard gear, nothing. Any kid can achieve this in his bedroom if he wanted, nothing special, especially when you're considering that it's a 58, which is not gonna be as sensitive as a, as a condenser mic in an untreated room. And my space where I'm recording is untreated. As a matter of fact, the space I'm talking to you in, my home studio is also untreated, so. A uh, little, little uh, food for thought there. Slaving myself over a waste of time. Now I've got something worth fighting for. I don't know what I'd do if it was gone. Cause don't you know you're the sweet. And that's my chain for this entire vocal performance. It's only one track. It was recorded live. And that's it, man. So hopefully that helps, you know, guide you in the right direction. Again, I share a lot of this in the Frightbox Mix Crypt. We do some harder rock songs. We do extreme metal songs. We do all kinds of stuff. And my vocal chain is always very, very similar to this. There really is no magic to it. It's just basic EQ, solid compression, and a great vocalist. So as you can see, how I achieved this vocal sound wasn't rocket science, just basic EQ, 
and a little bit of compression. Now, yes, it helped that the singer was really, really good, but at the end of the day, I use a very similar approach regardless of the vocalist. Also, regardless of the vocal mic, Believe me, you do not need fancy mic pre's or microphones to achieve professional results. You could achieve amazing sounding vocals or any instrument anywhere with almost any gear. Don't believe the lies on the internet. And also, if you'd like to check out more of Auburn Gray's music, I will leave a link below to their YouTube channel where you could watch more from this live session. Great dudes, great band. There's a link below check out their music. And again, if you're tired of being stagnant in your productions and you want to really learn more about EQ and compression and how to achieve professional results, you could have direct access for absolutely free to my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. You get an EQ and compression cheat sheet, private mixing tutorials, and multi-track downloads so you could practice your mixing along with me and utilize the same approaches that I use to achieve similar results with the gear and plugins that you already have. So I'm curious to know, I wanna hear your opinion. Were you always under the impression that you needed a nice condenser mic and fancy plugins and gear to achieve a professional sounding vocal? Or did you already know that it all came down to how you work your vocals and how you EQ your vocals within your mix? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal rock production. Till next time, happy mixing. <laughs>